Welcome back to Lockdown Anatomy with me, Alice Roberts. Now, I've designed these videos with medical students in mind, but if you're interested in anatomy and how your body's put together, there might be something for you here. This video is all about the muscles of the leg. And in anatomy, the leg is just that bit between the knee and the ankle. So let's start with the anterior compartment of the leg. So this is a group of muscles in the front of the leg, as you'd expect, all packaged up in their own fascial connective tissue sheath. And the first one we're going to look at is tibialis anterior. So that's attaching from the lateral side of the tibia and you can feel it in yourself. It's the fleshy bit. If you feel your shin bone and then move your fingers over to the outside of your leg, you can feel the fleshiness there and that's tibialis anterior. And that inserts onto the medial cuneiform bone in the foot and also the base of the first metatarsal. We can see that just here. And then a muscle lying quite deep in the calf, attaching from the fibula and the adjacent part of the interosseous membrane. And then just emerging lateral to the tendon of tibialis anterior is extensor hallucis longus. And that is running all the way down, as you can see, to the great toe to insert onto the base of the distal phalanx. Moving even more laterally, we come to extensor digitorum longus. So this muscle comes down towards the ankle and its tendon then divides into four and each of those tendons then continues into the toes to insert onto the base of the distal phalanx of each of those digits two through to five. So you can see those tendons there, the last one on the outer side, the lateral side going down to the little toe. And then the last muscle in this anterior compartment is peroneus or fibularis tertius and this attaches from the fibula which is why fibularis is probably a better name for it and it runs down to insert into the base of the fifth metatarsal, the metatarsal of the little toe. And all of these muscles in the anterior compartment are supplied by the deep perineal nerve. Let's label them up. There's tibialis anterior then, extensor hallucis longus, just emerging between the tendon of tibialis anterior and the tendon of extensor digitorum longus. And then finally, fibularis, sometimes called peroneus tertius. We'll find out why it's called the third fibula muscle very soon. But let's have a look at the actions of these muscles. Tibialis anterior then, we'll pick it out, we'll get it to glow and look, now we activate it and we see as it glows yellow that the foot is dorsiflexing. So tibialis anterior is a dorsiflexor of the ankle and it can also bring the foot inwards as well. So it can cause inversion of the foot joints. This is a motion that happens not at the ankle itself, but within the joints of the foot. Moving along to extensor hallucis longus, and this is a muscle that tells you exactly what it does in its name. It is the extender of the great toe, the big toe, the hallux. And then we've got extensor digitorum longus. Again, it tells you what it does. It extends those other digits. And here it is in action. So curl the toes, then get that muscle to glow, and those toes pull up into extension. So these are all really extensor muscles in this anterior compartment of the leg. And there we've got that little fibularis or peroneus tertius in action as well. So again, it's going to be a dorsiflexor. All these muscles are going to be dorsiflexors as well as the ones that act further down on the toes. Let's just have a look at where all of those tendons are lying in front of the ankle joint then. Tibialis anterior first over on the medial side. Then we've got extensor hallucis longus, then extensor digitorum longus, and then fibularis or peroneus tertius. Spinning around to the lateral side of the leg, we're going to look at this smaller compartment now, which comprises just two muscles. It comprises peroneus or fibularis longus. And this muscle, you can see its tendon going right underneath the foot there. We're getting a really good view of it traveling in a tunnel underneath the foot and inserting into the base of the first metatarsal. And then this smaller fibularis or peroneus brevis muscle which again is wrapping around behind the lateral malleolus, the lateral knobbly bit at your ankle, and this time inserting onto the base of the fifth metatarsal. When those muscles act, and we can see them glowing and pulling now, those are going to pull the foot into eversion. And we can also see in this image that fibularis or peroneus tertius is shown as well. So those three peroneal or fibular muscles are all going to 
either the foot and remember this is happening not at the ankle joint but at the subtalar joints and lower joints in the foot as well. So forget about fibularis tertius for a minute and just focus on those two tendons that are traveling around behind that lateral malleolus. You can see because of the direction of pull there that they are going to be plantar flexors of the ankle joint as well. So they will act to bring the toes and the ball of the foot down towards the floor. Let's label up those muscles then. There's peroneus longus or fibularis longus and there's peroneus brevis also known as fibularis brevis. And peroneus longus and peroneus brevis are supplied by the superficial perineal nerve. That then goes on to supply sensation over the back of the foot, the dorsum of the foot. Let's have a look at this posterior compartment, the flexor compartment of the leg then. There are some superficial muscles here and some deeper ones. This one which I've highlighted is called gastrocnemius, which is a lovely name for a muscle which does form the belly of the calf. The gastro bit means belly, nemius means of the leg. So that fleshy bit in your calf is largely made up of this two-headed muscle gastrocnemius. And you can see that its heads actually attach up on the femur, just above the condyles of the femur. So it will have an action on the knee joint as well as down below on the ankle joint. And you can see that it is converging on this extremely large tendon, the Achilles tendon. It's a massive springy tendon. It means that humans are very naturally good at running and particularly endurance running. Although that tendon can be subject to stress and sometimes gets damaged, particularly in older athletes. Underneath gastrocnemius, we've got another muscle which contributes or joins in with the Achilles tendon. It's called soleus. And it does look a bit like a flatfish when you isolate it on its own. It looks like it's deficient lower down there, but actually what it's doing is joining in with the Achilles tendon going down to the calcaneus. And the calcaneus, the heel bone, sticks out like a big lever at the back. I say like a lever, it is a lever. Now, if we take away gastrocnemius and soleus, we can see a skinny little muscle here called plantaris, which again is joining in with the Achilles tendon, but it's so small in comparison with soleus and gastrocnemius. There are both of those muscles working together to pull up on the heel bone and to really powerfully plantar flex the foot. So when you are running at toe off, these muscles are really contracting and powerfully pulling so that your foot pushes down against the ground and your whole body weight is pushed up into the air. Now, if we pick off all of those superficial muscles in the calf, we can see that there's a bunch of other muscles lying much deeper, attaching from the tibia and the fibula and the posterior surface of the interosseous membrane. So these are the deep flexor muscles. Let's have a look at each one of them in turn. There we've got tibialis posterior, and that is running down behind the medial malleolus this time, so the knobbly bit on the medial side of your ankle, and inserts into the tuberosity of the navicular bone, but then also via slips into adjacent bones as well. Moving more medially, this muscle here, we can see it again passing behind the medial malleolus and four tendons passing down to the toes. And these are going to pull the toes into flexion. So this is flexor digitorum longus. And here we can see it glowing and pulling those toes claw-like into flexion. So flexor digitorum longus, and then this one over towards the lateral side, that's passing down again behind the medial malleolus and all the way down to insert onto the distal phalanx of the great toe. So this is flexor hallucis longus, the flexor of the hallux, the long flexor of the hallux indeed. And there you can see it doing its work together with flexor digitorum longus. All of those muscles in the posterior compartment are supplied by the tibial nerve. Let's label those up again just so we can see where they all are. Tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus and flexor hallucis longus. Those muscles of the deep compartment of the posterior compartment in the leg. Let's look at where the tendons lie just behind that medial malleolus as well. If we just zoom in on that. The tendon that's lying right up against the bone there is tibialis posterior, then flexor digitorum longus, then flexor hallucis longus.
a great way of remembering that is Tom, Dick and Harry. But actually, you could say Tom, Dick and not Harry, because between flexa digitorum longus and flexa hallucis longus, we have the posterior tibial artery and the tibial nerve. So A for artery, N for nerve, Tom, Dick and not Harry. Thank you for watching. I'll be back very soon with another video moving down to the ankle. If you've enjoyed this and found it useful, please like, please share, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you again here soon.